What's up YouTube? So in today's video I'm going to be talking about a couple different things, a couple different concepts that you can apply to your improvisation. So I'm going to be talking about two very specific ones. And one that is going to be kind of obvious once I'm done explaining the other two. So the first one is playing with a key centered approach. What this means is that your playing is based around the key. So the key center approach is a very popular thing around guitar circles. Most rock guitars tend to do this a lot. Um, and in, in layman's terms, it's just picking a key, just selecting the key, or figuring out the key of a specific tune or chord progression or whatever, um, and playing that key throughout your improvisation or solo or rhythm, rhythm parts or whatever it is that you're using this improvisation for. Now, for example, let's take the chords D minor 7, G7, and C major 7. Since this is a major progression, we're going to be using the major harmonized scale. So when I talk about the harmonized scale is, you take the specific chords within the scale, which are created from stacking thirds on top of each note. In this case, I'm using the chords of the major harmonized scale, which is the 1 major 7, 2 minor 7, 3 minor 7, 4 major 7, 5, 7, or dominant 7, 6 minor 7, and 7 minor 7 flat 5. In this progression, we have a D minor 7, which is the 2 minor 7 of the C major scale. We have a G7, which is the 5, 7 chord of the C major scale. And we have a C major 7, which is the 1 major 7 of the C major scale. So once we know that the 1 chord is C major, we know that the progression is in C major, which means that we can play the C major scale all over the progression. Now there's a couple of pros and cons in this approach. Now in terms of pros, we have quick application. You can learn the scales relatively quickly. Um, let's say you have to learn A minor, you just go through the patterns or, or go through the notes and learn them and get, it on, get them under your fingers. Now once you know the scale, you just got to figure out in what key the song is and then you can just go up and down the scale. Um, your different with the specific genre vocabulary that that you should apply in in each context of each song. The other pro in terms of key center is fast runs. Since you're playing the scale, you can play fast runs. So playing fast is going to be a bit easier. Not having to think about note choices and just being able to play those seven notes up and down in different patterns and in different um, and in different groupings it's going to allow you to play a bit faster it's going to be easier on your fingers and your on your mind so if you have your skill patterns and you're facing down you can play fast without a problem now to the cons one of the biggest flaws in the key center approach is the hit and miss what i mean by this is that you get to you have to experiment a lot with the scale you have to play a lot by ear you have to figure out what are the best note choices for the for the different chords. There's also a high probability that you might find yourself playing avoid notes. Avoid notes, again, in layman's terms, are just chord extensions that just plain old don't sound good against the chord. It's going to cause a little bit of dissonance between the chord and what you're playing. So the next um, approach is chord tones. And we've heard chord tones in classical music, in jazz music, even in rock music. We've also heard the key center approach in all these types of music. Um, but chord tones are very present in classical and jazz. Now, I've all, I always heard from one of my teachers over at Musicians Institute, um, his name is Al Bonham. He always used to tell us to listen to the solo in Stairway to Heaven. You all know it starts with an A minor pentatonic, and it does that, that very memorable lick, and it lands on an F. Why does it land on an F? Because it's landing on that F chord, and that's exactly why it's landing on an F chord. Because it's a chord tone. It's a tone present within the chord. And that's exactly what chord tones are. It's the notes within the chords. Now chord tones is something that a lot of that a lot of the of the new guitar players are using. Um, a lot of the newer um, fusion guys are playing chord tones and playing different um, substitutions and different scales and bringing all these types of things from different genres. And applying the, the attitude of rock or applying the, the groove of funk and all these types of things 
um, the, the feel of the blues, applying all these things and making it work together, making it gel. Now to show you how to apply these chord tones, we can use the same chords as before, which are D minor 7, G7, and C major 7. And now, what the improviser would do over, over this, this case, over this chord progression, um, he would play the notes of the D minor 7 arpeggio over the D minor 7 chord, the notes of the G7 arpeggio over the G7 chord, and the notes of the C major 7 arpeggio over the C major 7 chord. And again, we have pros and cons to this approach. Some of the pros are, it's, it's very precise. Okay, you're not gonna get avoid notes like you're gonna get them in the key center approach. You're playing chord tones. It's gonna be everything's gonna sound neat. Everything's gonna sound clean. You're gonna get reliable note choices. Okay, so again, you can assure yourself that these notes are gonna be are gonna sound good because they're part of the chord and there's gonna be no nasty sounding notes if you're playing chord tones. These are the safest notes to play. Over the, over the passing chords of the chord progression. You're, it's impossible to get any dissonant notes when playing chord tones. Lastly, it sounds great when you, once you adapt it to your style. Some of the most melodic and incredible solos in history are based around chord tones. Now, the magic behind using these notes when improvising is not to think of them as arpeggios. You want to think of them as, as just notes that you're gonna phrase differently. You, you want to add vibrato, you want to slide into them. You want to make these notes the longest notes within your solo. Because these are the ones that are gonna sound really, really well against the chords. Now the cons to chord tones is that it's gonna take a little bit more work than, than with a key center approach. Okay, because you have to practice each arpeggio or each each of the sounds, each of the, of the notes within the chords for the different passing chords. So you have to play different material for each passing chord. Another con is that speed is going to take a little bit more work. Since everything's changing all the time, you're going to get all those different notes under your fingers. It's not the same as just playing one scale up and down. You've got to play different material for each chord. The last con is that you have to put more practice time in it. It takes a little bit more time to be able to apply chord tones than again just playing the scale up and down. But again, all this practice time brings in more reward because you're going to have better, more tastier, um, more secure, more, more professional sounding solos. Now the last approach that you can do is obviously to combine both of these approaches. You want to be, you want to play chord tones and you want to put scale tones in between them. And this is where it gets um, pretty cool and pretty amazing. Um, if you if you learn your avoid notes, you can use different extensions within the scale to color in different sounds within the different chords that pass by, and that's what makes things sound way groovier. Because if you play just the chord tones, it it can also get a little bit stale. It might sound a little bit more traditional, even though it's it's definitely the more secure way to to improvise. <laughs> None of these concepts are are bad. Um, there's amazing players play, using all three of these concepts: the, the key center approach, the chord tone approach, or just using both of these concepts together. So they're all good. It depends on you. It depends on on your no choices. It depends on your taste. Now there's a couple of recommendations that I can give you guys. So you can base your playing around chord tones and add different um, scale extensions to spice things up. You can also use the key center approach to add more fluid um, and speedier and faster phrases. You can also base your playing around the key center approach and then try to base your longer notes on chord tones. So for example, you can play on your faster passages, you can play just the key center and, and the specific um, scale that you got to play over whichever chord or song or whatever, and, and then try to hit chord tones when you're trying to get into a slower, longer notes would have a that have a little bit more meat into them and that have a little bit more meaning. So it's all about how how you twist everything up. So you can base your style around 
any which way, any which of these different um, concepts, that's going to sound good. It's all up to you, and it's all up to, the, to your phrasing. All right, so that's it for this video. Remember to subscribe, leave a comment below, and hit the like button. You can also follow me on all types of social media like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All right, thanks for watching.